We thank God for another day in His presence. Welcome to today's edition of Men of Eternity. My name is Reverend Kinsley, and we're here to study the Word of God. We started a message in our previous video, which we entitled Healing the Heart. Amen. And we'd like to continue that same teaching today. If you've not listened to the first video, I will encourage you to visit our channel on YouTube, Men of Eternity, or visit Facebook, Men of Eternity. Amen. And you can have the message there. And listen to it and come to this message also and listen to this message so that you receive the fullness of the blessing in this word. Amen. We are about to listen to your word, Father. We ask, O oh God, and let the Holy Spirit come and teach us, O oh God, the great teacher. Give us revelation, impart your grace into us, O oh God. Open our minds to receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So this is part two, healing the heart, part two. Amen. Very awesome teaching. Amen. And you shall be very blessed. All right. In our first video, we, we, we read a scripture. That is the main text for this lesson. The book of Matthew chapter number 12. Matthew 12 verse 13. Sorry, verse 33. Matthew 12 verse 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. Amen. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So Jesus is saying that you generation of vipers, how can you be evil? Speak good. That means that you people are evil by nature. So if you are evil by nature, how can you speak good things? Amen. Verse 35. Matthew 12, 35. A good man out of the good treasure of, him, of the heart bring forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. So Jesus is saying that our words and our actions comes out of our heart. And he, before he said that, he used the tree. Amen. So the tree represented the heart and the fruit represent the words and the actions we do. So verse 3, I'm reading Matthew 12, verse 3 again. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. So if you want a good tree, you, make, you want a good fruit, you make the tree good. Because only good tree can bear good fruit. Amen. So if you want to, your words to be good and your actions to be good, you make sure that your heart is good. The good treasure, where your good treasure is, which is the heart, it is good. If it is not good, no matter what you do, you produce evil. Amen. That is what he's teaching him. And we said that um, though we are born again, when we got born again, Holy Spirit came into our spirit. We got born again and received Christ. Amen. But our soul was not saved. Amen. Our body, which is physical, is still not saved. It will be saved at the second coming of Jesus. But our soul is not saved. And we said that the soul is made up of our emotions, our will, our mind, uh, our passions, desires, all these things are in the soul. And you see, the heart, amen, the, 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 the things in the soul is made up of the heart because through our heart we desire, which is part of the soul. Uh, the Bible speaks of we grief the heart. It's an emotional thing, which is of the soul, amen. The Bible speaks of, and he said in his heart, Amen. And we said it is a which is the will. It is an emotion. It's an a soul thing. So all the functions of the soul are found in the heart. Amen. And therefore, you see, when you get born again, when you get born again and you receive the Holy Ghost baptism and even can speak tongues, you realize that there are certain things you used to know. You still know them. Amen. When you get born again, the things you know in your mind did not change. It is still there. So you have to take time to unlearn those things to learn new things. Amen. And that is where the healing of the heart comes in. You know, when you get born again, your heart is not completely saved. Amen. You must go on to make sure that your heart is completely saved. Your heart is completely healed. Amen. Your heart is completely uh, transformed from evil to good. A lot of Christians, they are born again and yet so their heart is full of evil thoughts. And we saw that in the book of Acts chapter 
8 concerning Simon when he got born again. Amen. Now, let's read that again. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. We read this in our first video, so we will not take time. We will just pick some points there. Acts chapter 8. When Simon got born again, uh, he, he, the disciples also, the apostles at Jerusalem heard that people have repented in the city of Samaria by the preaching of Philip. And the apostles came down to lay hands of them so that they would receive baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said that when Simon saw that when the apostles lay hand, people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Bible said that he also offered money to Peter that give take this man and give me some of this power so that when I lay my hands on people, they will be saved. Amen. Now, we saw from the scripture, let's read Acts chapter 8, verses number 13. Acts chapter 8, verses 13. Acts chapter 8, verse 13. And Simon himself believed also and when he was baptized we saw from scripture jesus said in matthew chapter 16 he says go ye to the world and preach whosoever is believed and is baptized shall be saved so jesus said that when someone believes and you baptize him the person is saved so we see here clearly that simon was saved he believed and he was baptized but you see when he saw that through the lane of hands People were receiving the Holy Ghost power. He thought that the way he can, he can gain that power was to pay. Amen. So that's what Peter told him. Verse 20. Mark Acts chapter 8 verse 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither parts nor lot in this matter. Thine heart, for thy heart is not right, is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven. For I perceive that thou art in God of bitterness and in bond of iniquity. When people read it, they say Simon was pretending that he was not saved. He was saved. He was saved. The problem is that he had not learned how to receive the power of God. He had not learned. He just got born again. So there are so many things he didn't know. So he thought, you know, he wished to be a sorcerer. Amen. And in the world of sorcery, that's what they used to do. They, they, they sacrifice something to receive power. They do certain, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, trading, spiritual trading to receive power. So he thought that is the same in the kingdom of God. So it is not that Simon was not saved. He was saved. The problem is that he thought that he can purchase. So that's why Peter said, Repent therefore for this thy wickedness and pray, if perhaps the thoughts of your heart so it was in the thought of your heart may be forgiven so the issue was that the thought of his heart what he was thinking in his heart was the problem the knowledge he had in his heart was that let me buy some of this power it is that does not mean that he's not saved we are lots of christians who are saved they speak in tongues but they have not gone through the process of healing their heart Amen. To, to take away the evil treasure and to replace that evil treasure with good treasure. And therefore, they are born again, but their actions speak something different. So sometimes it looks as though they are not born again. They are born again, but their heart is full of evil treasure. Their old way of life, they have not learned how to take, the, they have not unlearned the old way of life to learn the new way of life in Christ. And therefore, their actions is betraying them as though they are not born again. This is the problem. Amen. So, Peter said, pray therefore. Now, in our first video, we said that the first way of healing the heart is to fill our heart with the word of God. Let's look at the book of Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? So David is prayed that how can a young man cleanse his way? That means how can a young man live a holy life? Amen. He said, by taking heed unto your word. Verse 10. With my, that, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we see that David discovered that the antidote of sin is to hide the word of god in your heart so that you will not sin against god so if you are born again and you don't hide the word of god in your heart you find yourself sinning and when it happens like that it will be as though you have not been saved 
The same thing happened to Simon. He had not had the opportunity to be taught the word of God and to allow the word of God to be hidden in his heart. Therefore, he found himself doing something he used to do when he was practicing witchcraft. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see that this is what Peter says. Say, Repent therefore of, thy, of this thy weakness and pray God. So we saw that the first thing when it comes to healing the heart is to hide the word of God in the heart. The second key is prayer. You see, you cannot hide the word of God in your heart without prayer. Amen. Because a lot of Christians read the Bible. They memorize the scripture. But the scripture is not their heart. It is only in their mind. And that is the reason why no matter what, no matter how many quotations they can recite, no matter how many quotations they can quote, they still find themselves doing evil. Because the word of God is not just the written letters. It is spiritual. Amen. Now, let me show you something. In the book of John chapter 17, verse 17, John 17, 17, Jesus is speaking, he said, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So the word of God can sanctify. Say, sanctify them through thy truth, and thy word is truth. So the word of God is truth. The word of God is truth. Amen. And the word of God can sanctify because it is truth. Amen. Now, first John chapter 5. What I read earlier was John chapter 17, verse 17. Now let's read first John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness, because the spirit is truth. The spirit is truth. The spirit is truth. We saw Jesus say that the word is truth. The word is truth. And here, John is also speaking by the revelation, saying that the spirit is truth. So the word is truth and the Holy Spirit is also truth, which means that both of them are truth. And therefore, the word and the spirit go together. So you cannot say that you will be studying scripture and do not engage the Holy Spirit. You cannot say that you will be studying scripture and do not pray. It is impossible. You, when, when you decide to study scripture, you must pray along. Amen. And when you decide to pray, you must study the scripture along it. Because both are truth and they go together. Amen. Now, how do you engage the spirit? By praying. Amen. So by praying, you are engaging the spirit, which is truth. And through that, when you begin to pray, what is happening is that when you are studying scripture and reading scripture and you are praying along it, you realize that the scripture you are reading, you begin to receive understanding. Your understanding will be open. And when your understanding open, you get to a point where you begin to receive new insight, new revelation. The word of God will begin to come into your heart. It will be hidden in your heart. And that's where transformation will be taking place. That is where your heart will begin to get healed and to be transformed from evil to good. Hallelujah. Let me show you something in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 6. Says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness and shine in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So God has commanded lights to shine in our hearts so that we will receive the knowledge of the glory of God, the knowledge, the word of God. So as we are reading the scripture and praying, the prayers we are praying, the Holy Spirit will take the scriptures we are reading and will move the scriptures from being just letters and it will become a living word of God in our hearts. So when the scriptures become a living word of God in our hearts, it will get to a point where we will have that understanding and our hearts will begin to transform. Then we will find out that we are born again and we will begin to act like truly who are born again. But if we don't read scripture and we don't pray, we are born again but we will not act like people are not born again. The only way to act like someone who is born again, the only way to make your heart good, the tree good, is to stay the scripture and pray along with it. Because the scriptures, the word of God and the spirit is true. Jesus said, when we read the Matthew chapter 12 verse 33, he says, either make the heart, make the tree good and the fruit will be good, or make the tree evil and the fruit will be evil. So it is your duty and my duty to make sure that our tree is good. And what is the tree? The heart. So it is our duty to make sure our heart is good. It is our duty to make sure that our heart has, the evil in our heart has been taken out and the good has been placed in our heart. And how does that happen? By hiding the word of God in our heart. And how do we hide the word of God in our heart? By praying along with stating the scriptures.
Amen. Let me show you. Even David did the same thing. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy status. So, how was David hiding the word of God in his heart? By praying that God would teach him the word of God. So, he would study the scriptures the Torah and when he studied he prayed for understanding and when he prays understanding he realized that God was now filling his heart with the word of God like we read in Peter is we read in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 that God has commanded the light to shine in our heart to give us the knowledge of the glory of God so without prayer we will read the Bible and we will not receive the word of God because the word of God comes out of the scripture the scripture itself by itself is not the word of god it's just a scripture amen but when we pray along stating the scripture we will begin to receive the word of god in our hearts and we'll hide the word of god in our hearts then we'll find ourselves not sinning against god that is how we heal our hearts beloved we need to get to a point that we do not only study and memorize scriptures we must pray deep in the spirit Amen. The Bible says, build yourself up in the Holy Ghost by praying in tongues. So we must be very prayerful because the word is truth and the spirit is truth. The word and the truth are two together. They are one and one. They cannot be separated. So when you are praying and you are not reading the Bible, you are not doing the complete job. You are wasting your time. If you are also reading the Bible and not praying, you are also wasting your time. The truth, the truth must be engaged. The spirits and the word of God must be engaged together to release the power of God. Hallelujah. So, beloved, I want you to know that you must begin to learn how to pray. Practice prayer. Pray a lot. Prayer changes the heart, beloved. The more you pray, the more your heart is being changed. The more you pray, the more the flesh, the old nature is coming down. The more the old nature is losing its power over your life. Prayer is that powerful. Amen. So we need to get to a point that while we are studying scripture, we are praying along because prayer is how we engage the Holy Spirit. Prayer is how we release the Holy Spirit. Prayer is how we activate the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Which is truth. And the word is truth. Hallelujah. Beloved, this is the end of my message. Amen. It's a very short message. Amen. It's a message that teaches us how we can heal our hearts by sticking heed to the word of God, meditating on the word, hiding the word of God in our heart, and by praying, like David said, Amen. Beloved, this is the end of my message. God bless you, this man of eternity. We're on Facebook, follow our page, we're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, Amen. And beloved, I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal himself to you, reveal Christ to you. I pray that your heart will be filled with this word. I pray that Holy Ghost will take possession of your heart and transform you from who you used to be into who you are supposed to be in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen.